Now we go over to Major League Baseball, where the best team in the American League, at least with the best record at this moment, resides as well. The Guardians have won five straight games. Cleveland, 49 in 26. That is the best winning percentage in the American League, second best in all of MLB. Now, they've played less games than both the Yankees and the Orioles, but the hottest team in baseball. One of the first games of the day on this Monday in Baltimore against the O's. Baltimore, a home favorite. Cade Povich on the mound, minus 120, that money line number. Yeah, Povich hasn't done a lot of work this year in Major League Baseball, and particularly being at home, which he will be today. So it'll be interesting to see how he deals with Camden Yards. But having said that, he's a left-handed pitcher. His numbers are decent on the splits. Only 69 batters he's faced on the season, an 0-69 ISO, and a weighted on base percentage, 265, which is really good. Now, here's what it's going to come down to. You know I've told you how much I really like that Cleveland lineup. But tonight, against left-handed pitching, it doesn't really present itself all that well. Only two players at a 190 to 192 ISO power number else is below that so maybe we're taking a look at Povich can get away with a decent start today and the Orioles can come away with a victory after not being able to find one for the past couple games the O's swept this weekend in Arlington against the Rangers hoping for better back in Baltimore we keep it going here on the early line on this Monday to set up a new week a 12 game Major League Baseball slate that's nearly full on this Monday to begin and the Boston Red Sox playing some really good baseball at this moment. The Red Sox now have won seven of their last eight. They win the weekend series over the Reds. Donnie's American League team looking pretty solid right now as the month of June nears a close. And a pretty hefty favorite today in a divisional duel back in Fenway against the Toronto Blue Jays, who are the opposite of good at this moment. Minus 142 with Tanner Houck on the bump, eight and a half. The total for this game at Fenway. Donnie, what do you like? Yeah, wind blowing out to right field today, which is always a plus there in Boston. But that heat dome that we saw over the weekend that was probably pushing those temperatures at least mid-80s or higher, looks like 69 degrees at first pitch, which is very comfortable. Now, let's take a look at these two pitchers. Hauk has been absolutely tremendous this year, but also Chris Bassett hasn't had a bad go over it. A 3.87 XFIP number and a 3.34 ERA over the past 60 days. That's really good. Now, here's the Mm. issue. You take a look at some of those non-analytical numbers, like what already happened on the field. ISO power number weighted on base percentage. 0 and 285 for Bassett over his past 128 batters. That is absolutely sensational. Here's the issue, though. You take a look at Dominic Smith, a left-handed batter here over the past 30 days for the Boston Red Sox. He has a 297 weighted on base percentage. Every single batter is at least a 310 or higher versus right-handed pitching over the past month. So if you're just looking at trust, I think the better pitcher overall is on the mound here for the Boston Red Sox. And I think the better overall lineup here is there for the Boston Red Sox. So I'll take that money line. It's not that expensive. I'm going to keep it under a 150 nope. price at this point. I just like Boston in this spot. I think they're better. I think they're at home. I think they'll take care of business. Tanner Houck has been one of the five, ten best pitchers in the American League throughout this year. Oftentimes, Mm -hmm. that money line number then inflated when he gets a start. And the Red Sox have been great. They have won seven of their last eight. Keep an eye on Boston. If the season were to end today, the Red Sox would be a wild card team in the AL. The top of the American League West, that remains the Seattle Mariners. But this weekend was not good for the M's. They lost the series to the Miami Marlins. The yeah. Marlins, the worst team in the National League. Seattle looks to bounce back as they continue their four to swing in Tampa against the Rays. It's a de facto pick them. What's the play? Yeah, here's where you like to take a look at these splits, Ben. This is why you make a difference. You can take a look at the season as a totality, but then take a look at some of these pitchers, how they're faring at home and how they're faring on the road. When you're in the trop, it's one of the better pitchers' ballparks in Major League Baseball. But if you look at Todd Bradley, and again, he's home. I just want to bring up his road statistics. An 8.16 ERA, a 5.05 XFIP. That is absolutely disastrous. And that does go into some of those ISO power number weighted on base percentages that you like to take a look at. But Taj Bradley at home, one of the best pitchers in baseball, Ben. 30 innings at home, a 2.10 ERA, and an XFIP minuscule at 2.60. So sometimes you just have to take a look at where these guys are pitching, how comfortable they are at home. Now, Seattle also very comfortable typically pitching in pitchers' ballparks, which you're going to find one here as opposed to T-Mobile out there on the West Coast. So for my money in this game, probably looking towards an under, but I just can't pass up how good Taj Bradley's been at home. I'll also take a look there at the Tampa Bay Rays.
Seven and a half is that total. Mm-hmm. The Rays, the slight mm-hmm. underdog, minus 112 for Seattle, minus 104 on the other side for Tampa. Road favorite as well for the Phils on the road in the Motor City, minus 178. Aaron Nola gets the start today for the Fightins. The Tigers throw out Casey Mize on the other side. Should Philly be that strong of a favorite DRS in Detroit? Yeah, I mean, they they should win the baseball game, right? So you're saying, well, yeah. not if they win the juice, does it matter? Well, of course it does. And it's what you want to pick out and bet early in the day. It's like, you know what? Keep that minus 150 or less. It's a little bit harder to deal with that juice over minus 150. But the Phillies are a better ball club overall than Detroit. Having said that, though, you take a look at Aaron Nola. He's had some issues with some of the starts. Last one come up, I think it was absolutely filthy on his last start. But outside of that, he yeah. does have some games that creep up with you. But Mize on the mound here for Detroit, he's an okay pitcher at this point. Take a look at his last 30 days now here's the issue waiting on base percentage to lefties is quite high 57 at bats that's a 406 weighted on base percentage we know of two lefties in that lineup that are probably going to do some damage that's Kyle Schwarber and it's Bryce Harper the Phillies should be able to win this game but I don't love the total in this one I probably look more towards the under it's 80 degrees in Detroit which is fine that is a pitcher's ballpark Ben but the wind is blowing slightly in so if I'm looking at these two matchups I think I'm going to go under the total in this game much like we saw yesterday in Philadelphia between them and the Diamondbacks Aaron Nola, 8-3 this year with a 3-5-4 ERA, but has given up a total of 11 runs over his last two starts. Eight earned yeah. against the Red Sox nearly a week and a half ago. Now we go to St. Louis. The Cardinals sweeping the Giants in that extended weekend series against San Francisco. The Braves victorious in the Bronx. They continue the road trip in the Midwest. Under the arch, Atlanta, a road favorite, minus 122, with Spencer Schwellenbach on the bump against the Cardinals but St. Louis now two games above 500 what's the play in the loo yeah, we're probably going to look at St. Louis in this one today. And if you take a look at Lance Lynn, not a great pitcher, but better at home than he is on the road. Here's the thing. He dominates as a right-handed pitcher, Ben, against right-handed batters. He should have an advantage. But lefties have gotten the best of them. So if you take a look tonight, that's Kellenick, that's Albies, that's Olsen, and that's Forrest Wall. How about that name? So you know we're reaching all the way yeah. back in the bag here for Atlanta to try to secure some victories. But I do think Schwellenbach, a younger pitcher on the road, could struggle a little bit. The one thing I do like about St. Louis is they do have a talented lineup. We were just waiting for him because before the season started you know I'm looking at this division going yeah probably St. Louis will be able to win it if they get decent pitching Mason Wynn has been very good in the top of that lineup you have a lot of guys tonight yeah, with right. high ISO power numbers versus right-handed pitching Burleson, uh, Burleson Goldschmidt Gorman Donovan Carpenter and Pajes all of those guys have a legitimate chance to take Schwellenbacher deep tonight I'm gonna go St. Louis at home going up against Atlanta today DRS, you would expect the L.A. Dodgers, one of the best teams in the National League and the favorites to win the NL pennant, to be a very hefty favorite, even on the road in Chicago, against the Big's worst team, and that's the White Sox, only 21 wins. But it's only minus 134 in favor of L.A. That's because of Garrett Crochet on the other side for the Southsiders. Can they pull the upset tonight at home? I, you know what? I probably forget about the full game. Let's go first five innings. Crochet yeah, at home five. this year, Ben. Yeah. You take a look at this. And by the way, 51 and a third innings pitched here. He's got a 261 ERA and a 1.65 FIP number, which equates to a 1.85 XFIP. And we know one guy who's not great with XFIP numbers, and that's Paxton. First five innings here. I'll go with Crochet. Even pick up in that first five money line. Minus 112 on both sides for MLB breakdowns next. Good weekend for the Texas Rangers. Bad weekend for the Milwaukee Brewers, who return home to Milwaukee on this Monday to host the Rangers. The Rangers victorious in Arlington. Three-game sweep over the Kansas City Royals. The Brewers did win the finale last night in San Diego, but the Brew Crew lost the first three games, just avoiding a four-game weekend sweep. Milwaukee, a pretty hefty home favorite today, though. Back in the state of Wisconsin, will the odds match up when all is said and done? Yeah, two decent XFIP guys on the mound today, but talking about Michael Lorenzen and also Freddie Peralta. But let's take a look at that Milwaukee lineup going against Lorenzen, who is a right-handed pitcher. Now, get this. He's great against left-handed batters, which is sort of an anomaly, and really bad ISO power number weighted on base percentage-wise against righties here. Here's the only issue. We don't have a great-looking lineup coming into this game from Milwaukee. If you're looking at those right-handed batters, say, you know what, where would be an RBI prop? Jackson Churio in that nine-hole here, a 237 ISO and a weighted on base percentage of 381. 
over the past 30 days against right-handed pitching. And then we take a look at Willie Adamas, a 281 ISO and a weighted on base percentage of 413, but not a lot to love in that lineup. Let's flip it over to the other side here and take a look at Freddie Peralta, who does have some pretty good numbers at home on the season. That does have an ERA at 4.91. He said, Don, that's not that great, but take a look at his XFIP number, 3.15. That's really good at home. But also that lineup today, Seager and Smith, Great numbers against right-handed pitching over the past month. The rest of that lineup has been abysmal for the Texas Rangers. So forget about even picking a side here. I think it matches up probably for an under in this ball game between Milwaukee and Texas. I like the look, DRS. No specific yeah. starter named yet for one of the final games of the day in San Francisco between the Giants and the Cubs. The Cubbies yeah. at home, Sunday night baseball, have to make the trip out to the West Coast. They are a road underdog with their starter name. That's Justin Steele. Are your numbers telling you that Sam Fran has named a starter for tonight? No, I don't, I don't see it up in the numbers so far just yet. But if we're taking a look, yeah. cause sometimes when Spencer Howard is on the mound, it's almost like they just go, all right, two innings, three innings, two innings, three innings between their yeah. pitchers here. So I don't think you're even looking at say, hey, let me zero in, even if it is Howard, because he doesn't go all that long. Here's the question here, because Justin Steele, those home and away splits that yeah. we love to look at, sure, your home splits aren't going to be as good because you pitch in Wrigley Field, but you want to know how those road splits would be. And take a look at San Francisco, one of the premier pitching ballparks here in the, in the National League, I should say. Steele on the road this year, 20 and two-thirds innings pitch pan, an ERA of 2.51 and an XFIP of 3.21. He should be able to hold those bats Ooh. down tonight. So maybe the yeah. Cubs, who again, talking about holding it, they hold their own bats down at this Man. point. If you can say the Cubs can get the four runs, they'll probably win this game tonight. The, the Cubs need to. In the last yeah, month, on May 20th, Chicago was five games above 500, Ooh. 27 and 22. Things were okay there on the north side of Shy Town. But since that point, 10 and 19 for the Cubbies. They just lost the weekend at home against the New York Mets. The Giants not playing great ball either. Swept in St. Louis with the first game of the series Thursday night at Rickwood Field in Birmingham. San Francisco, a five-game skid returning back home. But I don't mind the plus money with Justin Steele for Chicago tonight. As we look for a best bet on this mm. Monday, there's a game seven on the line and at stake with a Stanley Cup hanging in the balance in Sunrise. There's a ton of Major League Baseball, and there's a winner-take-all game number three in Omaha for the Men's College World Series. Who gets crowned a national champ tonight? Before we say farewell and before we say goodbye, it is time for Bye Bye Bye. Down your right side, what is your best bet on this Monday? Let's go ahead and fade Griffin Canning. Not an aside here, but an RBI prop. And last week, we were hot as all get out throughout the week. Let's continue that new week, new money tonight. I'm going to take a look at Tyler Soderstrom, the first baseman, the left-handed hitting first baseman here for the Oakland Athletics with a 222 ISO and weighted on base percentage of 366 over his last 65 at-bats against right-handed pitching. Now, he's a lefty. You take a look at Griffin Canning. 255 ISO and a 361 weighted on base percentage over his last 56 batters from the left side that he faced. And also, those home road splits. He's at home tonight. Take a look at this. A 4.5 ERA and a 5.31 XFIP number. Soderstrom has a legitimate chance to go yard tonight, but he should be able to cash in an RBI to plus 155 price.